Tactical Air Command fighter streaks low across the countryside. The mission? Knock out a vital enemy road or rail complex. Achieve air superiority over the battlefield. Or provide close air support for ground forces. Missions may vary, but the ability to effectively carry out such tasks does not. This is demonstrated daily by the crews of Tactical Air Command. of the Tactical Air Command is made up of these three Century Series strike aircraft. All can deliver nuclear or non-nuclear weapons. The North American F-100 Super Sabre, first U.S. Air Force fighter to fly operationally at supersonic speed in straight and level flight. Lockheed F-104 Starfighter, commonly referred to as the missile with a man in it, is a Mach 2 fighter. And this is the Republic F-105 Thunder Chief. This versatile all-weather fighter was designed to perform all functions of tactical air support. mobility, all of the strike aircraft must be air refuelable. The Boeing KB-50J aerial tanker provides a vital link in overseas movements. Using the probe and drogue refueling system, it can rendezvous with the strike force and refuel three fighters simultaneously, speeding them on to their overseas destination. TAC frequently shares in the use of the Boeing KC-135 jet tankers of the Strategic Air Command for training and overseas deployments. Adding a refueling drogue to the high-speed flying boom of the 135 makes it usable to fighter aircraft. The high operating speed of the 135 reduces strike force reaction times and provides greater stability for the fighter pilot during the intricate refueling operation. When used on overseas movements, the 135 accompanies the strike force along the entire route, providing fuel to the fighter aircraft as required. The versatility of the command's first-line fighters is demonstrated in the following sequences as the wide variety of missions assigned to TAC unfold. The F-100 makes a four-can napalm drop against enemy positions, tanks, or both. 2.75 rockets are fired against transportation facilities and convoys. In performing air-to-ground missions of interdiction and close air support, strafing runs are made with four 20-millimeter cannons. And dive bombing sorties are flown against road networks, troop concentrations, and supply areas. feet out, the bullpup is guided to its target by the pilot, who visually superimposes on the target the flare in the rear of the missile. And he makes up, down, right, or left corrections from the cockpit until the bullpup strikes the target. Such simplicity in guidance is producing greater accuracy and reliability than has ever been experienced in air-to-surface missiles. 
the F-104, another of the Century Series fighters in the TAC inventory. The Starfighter can strafe enemy positions with its Vulcan 20mm cannon, capable of firing 6,000 rounds per minute. Napalm, a part of the 104 weapon inventory, is used against enemy concentrations and similar targets. In the air superiority role, the F-104 employs the GAR-8 Sidewinder against enemy aircraft. Here, a previously launched 5-inch high-velocity rocket is overtaken and destroyed by the heat-seeking GAR-8. The F-105, a one-man airplane capable of Mach 2 speeds, can carry weapons internally and externally. Recently developed delivery technique has resulted in improved accuracy. The delay between drop and detonation provides a safe escape time for the aircraft and pilot. The 105 also delivers its punch on enemy targets by dive bombing. one 20 millimeter cannon which pours 100 rounds into the target every second napalm is also a part of the 105's weapon arsenal against reinforced bunkers and concentrations of armor the 105 uses 2.75 rockets to maximum advantage for air-to-air -air combat, the F-105 uses the GAR-8 Sidewinder to ensure air superiority over the battlefield. Here, a direct hit is scored on a Mach 2 target drone. For immediate modernization and augmentation of its primary strike aircraft, TAC has selected this McDonnell F-110A as having the best capability of in-production aircraft for the complete tactical air mission. A reconnaissance version, the RF-110, will also be added to TAC's combat posture. Two powerful jet engines with afterburners can get the fully loaded 110 airborne in less than 3,000 feet. Completed tests in the tactical environment have proved the F-110 to be completely compatible with the entire arsenal of present tactical nuclear and non-nuclear weapons. Holder of more than a dozen world speed and time to climb records, the aircraft has flown in excess of 1,600 miles per hour and climbed to 65,000 feet in less than three minutes. The 110 is air refuelable and has both a nuclear and non-nuclear capability. Extremely versatile, it can deliver large composite loads of napalm, rockets, and conventional bombs. The 110 has the capacity to deliver more than twice the normal bomb load of the World War II Flying Fortress. Shown here is the delivery of a partial load composed of 13 750-pound demolition bombs. The 110's delivery capability, coupled with the ability to take off or land in less than 3,000 feet, proved this aircraft to be a valuable asset to tax growing family of aircraft for its global mission. Tactical reconnaissance is a vital segment of tax combat mission. It provides visual, photographic, and electronic information concerning the activity of friendly and enemy forces. 
long-range bomber and fighter reconnaissance aircraft are presently used in this role. The supersonic McDonnell RF-101 Voodoo, carrying high-speed cameras and electronic gear, can fly high and low altitude missions to accomplish this phase of tactical air operations. It is air refuelable, and it's an integral part of the TAC strike force. The Douglas RB-66 is an equally important factor in TAC's reconnaissance effort. In addition to daylight and electronic reconnaissance, this versatile aircraft can photograph the enemy at night, employing flash cartridges and flash bombs. WB-66, a weather reconnaissance aircraft, provides en route weather information prior to and during composite airstrike force and exercise deployments. Another of TAC's many roles is airlift. The bulk of this task is performed by the A and B models of the Lockheed C-130 Hercules. This long-range turboprop aircraft can carry heavy loads of cargo over 2,000 miles at speeds up to 370 miles per hour. It is used to transport army troops and equipment and can deliver both by paradrop or assault landing. It also performs a vitally important function in the transport of support personnel and equipment in tax composite air strike force deployments. Now making its entry into tax airlift fleet is an improved model of this reliable transport, the C-130E. The new model includes a landing gear modification which enhances its ability to operate from unimproved landing surfaces. Most important, the addition of these external fuel tanks to the E model extends the range to over 3,000 nautical miles. As with earlier models, the new E can deliver, ready for action, 92 fully equipped combat troops to trouble spots anywhere in the world. The total C-130 airlift force provides increased mobility and combat effectiveness for both tactical air and surface forces. The Fairchild C-123 provider is an assault transport for moving troops or equipment in intra-theater operations. The C-123 is used for airlift and Army airborne training in the United States. In addition to the troop carrier and reconnaissance missions, there are three classic functions of tactical air. Achievement of air superiority over the battlefield area. Destruction of targets, equipment, and communications between the enemy's rear areas and the front lines and close air support of ground forces. This is the story of Tack on Target.